Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool, also known as Mr. Valuation. You know, there's obviously been a lot of talk in the financial markets here recently about meme stocks, precisely AMC and GameStop, but there's other examples of that. And so, you know, I thought I would go ahead and give my two cents on the subject because it affords me the opportunity to make a very important distinction between speculating versus investing. And, you know, I'm going to utilize um, some of the teachings and lessons of, you know, Ben Graham, you know, the father of modern value investing, who wrote the seminal book, The Intelligent Investor. And in that book, he has a whole chapter dedicated to this idea of speculating versus investing. And there is a distinction. One of the big distinctions is time. Okay, speculators tend to be very short-term oriented. Investors tend to be long-term you know, investors. It's also, you know, whether you're, what your focus is on. Ben Graham's famous metaphor, in the short run, the market's a voting machine, but in the long run, it's a weighing machine, is extremely important, relevant to this discussion. So let's go ahead and get into the video here. And let's start by, I came across this piece here out of Novel Investor, and they were talking about Ben Graham lectures, and they covered several of the lectures. But, you know, he pointed out that Ben Graham covered in his book, The Intelligent Investor, on speculating versus investing. He had a whole chapter. And he says, this is a direct quote, first, what do we mean by speculation? There's a chapter in our book on security analysis, which is devoted to the distinctions between investment and speculation. I don't wish to repeat that material beyond recalling to you our concluding definition, which reads as follows. In other words, this is Ben Graham's definition of speculation versus investment. An investment operation is one which on thorough analysis promises safety of principle and a satisfactory return. Operations not meeting these requirements are speculative. This is the key point. Speculative operations are all concerned with changes in price. In some cases, the emphasis is on price changes alone. And in other cases, the emphasis is on changes in value, which are expected to give rise to changes in price. I think that is a rather important classification of speculative operations. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to look at the meme stock, GameStop and AMC. I'm going to limit it to those two. There's a lot of them out there now. This is all about the Reddit you know, situation. We all know what that's all about. And go ahead and let me, I, I found this other article in the balance. I'll go ahead and bring this in for a moment and talk about what a meme, what is a meme stock, okay? And uh, this was dated March of this year. So it goes back that far. And it says, here's a definition. A meme stock is a stock that has gone viral online, drawing the attention of retail investors. Of course, we all know what happened with Reddit. But also now we've also got hedge funds involved in this. So this has become a very you know, hot, high profile, what I believe extremely risky era of speculation here in these meme stocks, okay? And it's a stock that has seen an increase in volume, not because of the company's performance. In other words, not because the company's fundamentals have gotten better, but rather because of hype on social media and online forums like Reddit. For this reason, these stocks often become overvalued, seeing drastic price increases in just a short period of time. So let's go ahead and look at these. And, and I want to make a point because I don't think there's ever been a better opportunity for me to illustrate the difference between investing versus speculating. Back in the old days, you know, it wasn't too far ago. In fact, I can still briefly show it. You had the tech bubble where people were speculating in technology. Well, this is different, but yet it's still within the same principle of the difference between speculation and investing. Now, here's the point. All I've got on here now, I've got a fast graph just taking a look at GameStop's stock price only. Monthly closing stock price is going back to February of 2002. Okay, and I want you to notice that really the price didn't really go anywhere. It stayed pretty flat. There were periods of, you know, volatility. It got pretty high coming into the Great Recession then fell then had other periods where it was high. But then, you know, it got down to $4 a share by May of 2020. But here's the point. You know, earnings determine market price is something I've always talked about and always talked. And, and it's earnings, cash flows, sales, you know. In other words, it's how well the business does what determines stock price. So I'm using earnings here. So let's go ahead and put earnings on this graph now because I want you to see something very important. What you see is that there is a very rational, I'll add the normal PE as well because it kind of gives me a trading range, if you will. There was a re very rational movement of GameStop's stocks, long-term stock price movement in correlation to its earnings. In other words, the price tracked the earnings. And when it got disconnected, it moved back to the theoretical intrinsic value 
which is a PE of 15 for a company that grew at this rate. Now, if I go ahead and scroll this out a little bit, you'll even get a better perspective of how much the stock price reacted to the operations of the business. So, you know, I got 2002 through the end of 2019 here, and you can see that, you know, there were periods where GameStop's earnings did extremely well. And of course, that gets hype. And, you know, I want you to understand something. When you see earnings growth like this in the short run, these valuations are somewhat justified. You know, the PEs got high here, but look at the earnings growth rates, 56%, 15%, 71%. And then we had a down year. We come into the Great Recession, of course, which is the gray shaded area here. And then that ultimately led to a down year of about only 5%. GameStop actually did quite well during the recession if you put it into those prospects. And, you know, the bottom line is the stock price reacted dramatically and we had this huge drop in price. Then the company began to recover, but the market, you know, has a long memory sometimes. The stock price didn't follow suit, but eventually it did. And then, of course, just as it started to get back into what, what I would call reasonable valuations again, then we had this massive collapse in earnings. OK, so this is a picture of investing. It's kind of bad investing because obviously your rate of return from peak to trough here would have been horrific. You know, you'd have averaged an 11% annualized loss over a decade here or a minus 89% rate of return. But that was fundamentally based and fundamentally driven. So now we go ahead and fast forward up to current time. And then all of a sudden now we see this, you know, this, these huge spikes in price. So I'm going to shorten this time frame so we can see this a little better. And what happened is all of a sudden the Reddit guys got involved. The stock was around $18 a share back in December of 2020. And I'm just going to measure it from here. It had risen pretty dramatically, you know, from 4 and $5 a share back in here, I want you to see. But then from December of 2020 up through January of 2021, in one month's time, and that's the point, this is the real drama of what happened here, this stock went up over 16-fold, okay, 17-fold really, if you want to look at it. It's a total annualized rate of return of infinity almost. The numbers here don't even, you know, make any sense. There's so many digits in it. But you turn $10,000 into $172,000 in a month. That's just incredible. 17 times your money amount. The annualized rate of return is astronomical at this point is what I want to get at. But this was, again, relevant to that famous Bren Graham metaphor in the short run, the market's a voting machine. This is because a bunch of people got on the Reddit website and they just bid this stock up and they just drove the price up dramatically. Now, people that got in early made a fortune, no question. But the more the hype was, the more excited people got. People that got in late, for example, that started buying the stock in January of 2021, saw an opposite result. They saw from January 2021 to February of 21, in other words, again, approximately one month, 68% of their value disappeared. So for every $10,000 they invested on January of 2021, it turned into $3,130. And it's an annualized rate of return in excess of losing all of your money. And then you know, we also had hedge funds getting involved, shorting the stock. You know, this became a big controversy. It was all types of, um, I think there's even lawsuits pending on that. But then from the bottom again, the stock rallied again to another peak and, and grew 118% from February through May. That was another two or three month period. Now, the you know, obviously the, the velocity of what's happening here is beginning to slow down because what's happening is you're getting more intelligence or more you know, knowledge, if you will, coming into the equation. Now, very recently, since May of 2021, the stock is down about 16%. Now, I did take a quick check before I did this video. You know, today it was down about four, about four and a half percent, actually, you know, down $8 a share today. But again, this is strictly all price speculation. And this is the quintessential example of speculation. The key is negative earnings growth at $2.14 expected to recover quite a bit to only a loss of 69 cents for fiscal year 2022, which ends in January, by the way. And then they expect the losses to diminish more to only 13 cents. They've got a new CEO. He comes from Chewy. He's trying to convert this company from, you know, a brick and mortar company to an online stock. And there is actually some promise. In fact, 
if you look at forecasting on this stock, they're estimating the earnings are going to continue to get better and better and better. And that may all be true. But the point is, there's no real visibility of any of that. Right now, you've got a stock that's losing money and losing money big time. But you've got a stock that has made some people rich. And by the way, I'm going to argue, and I bet, you know, if truth were told, a lot of people have gotten very poor owning GameStop as well. Because this is a pure quintessential picture of speculation, that Ben Graham definition where people are just focused on price. And this is voting machine right here. The market, you know, the fundamentals don't matter. Historically, as I showed you before, historically, this is all, you know, the stock has always been about fundamentals. Fundamentals are what drove the price over these long periods of time. Now let's move on and let's go to AMC, another one. And I'm going to start out again with the stock price with no earnings on it. Now, we all know what happened with COVID in the movie theater. So when I bring earnings into the equation here on AMC, you see that the company's earnings were really struggling prior to COVID. And then during COVID, of course, when they shut them down, they've really collapsed. Their earnings, they actually lost $39 a share in fiscal 2020. I mean, the company was on the verge of being bankrupt. It has a triple C plus credit rating, which essentially illustrates that the company's bankrupt. Reddit guys got a hold of it, you know, from... April of 2021, in the height of all this meme stock, you know, frenzy, if you will, the stock goes up 465 percent, four and a half fold, almost five fold. The annualized rate of return, again, was just astronomical. But then since that time now, we've had a more recent, you know, from June of 2021 to current, we've seen the stock now fall 28 percent. That's annualizing at 100% loss if it would continue to do that for month after month after month. And the point is, you know, this one is also down today. And where is this all going to end? I don't think anybody knows where exactly or precisely when it's all going to end. But the reality is, I just think it's important that investors recognize this is what speculation, this is a classic picture, both of these stocks, AMC and GameStop are classic pictures of speculation in you know, this last year or so, or last several months. There's no fundamentals here. There's no value here. There might be future value at some point, but clearly, as the article I showed earlier, this has become extremely overvalued and speculative. There is no fundamental support under these prices. You're simply gambling. Now, by the way, I'm not necessarily against gambling. In other words, I don't want to make this a value judgment thing. I do think it's important, though, that investors, when they're engaging in speculation, they call it that. They acknowledge that, hey, I'm speculating in GameStop. Do not say I'm investing in GameStop because there is no investment merit to these meme stocks. It's all about speculating on price changes and who's going to get the upper hand and whether the retailers can, you know, force the hedge funds into short squeezes and so on and so forth. But eventually you're going to get regulatory involved. It's already starting to happen. And you're dealing with fire here. Play the game. Even if you want to play the game, you might want to use money that you can afford to lose, for example. But the key message I want to get across in today's video, understand the difference. Don't call yourself an investor when you're a speculator or vice versa. Don't call yourself a speculator when you're investing stocks. You know, invest it in as an investment merit, like, like Ben said, where you're positioning yourself to participate in the business and where you've got, you know, real safety of principle involved. Those principles are critically important to considering yourself or calling yourself an investor. When you're just playing around with stock prices and day trading and stuff like that, you're speculating. Just be aware of it. That's all my message is today. I hope you enjoy this video. It's Chuck Carnival saying thanks for watching. I did have to give my two cents on these meme stocks because I did want to make sure you saw this relationship between fundamentals and normal pricing of a stock like GameStop versus what's been going on as you know since it's been a quote unquote meme stock. If you like this video, give me a like, you know, ring the bell, the thumbs up, obviously, subscribe to the channel. And by the way, you might want to take a look at a free subscription to Fast Graphs, at least to get yourself oriented. It's a great tool and it's one that I'm very proud of. So I appreciate y'all watching. Thanks. I'll be talking to you again very soon.